Hi, I'm Leslie McVean. Welcome to Portland Media Center Member Highlights. Today my guest is Bazia. Hi, Bazia. Hi. The, one of the co-founders of Project Bazia. That's correct. Well, it's great to have you back again. It's been oh, a while. Thank you. Thank you. It's been a while now. <laughs> and here we are sitting together okay. at the beginning of week two of a big influx of refugees and immigrants coming from Texas to, to the to Portland, Portland area. Portland area. Um, your work has been involved with working with youth. With the youth uh, on different high schools, especially the one who they don't have mom, they don't have dad, they're by themselves. So they really love to have somebody to direct them, how to welcome them, to understand uh, how the life of I can say United States, or I can say the level of Poland. Right. Yeah. And your um, primary work has been with people from South Sudan who yeah, that's transitioned Transition, here. Uh, I've been okay. doing a lot of time, job with them, for the kids, and we did a lot of trip. And, and right now, we, we spend it to be the all Africa in the state of Maine. Right. Yes. It's all the same people, but the different Sort of different one countries. Africa. One Africa, yeah. 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 And, and the, the new people coming in are primarily from Congo. Yeah, primarily for a lot of them from Congo, yeah. Uh -huh. But you're going to, to work with the, because there were many, you, you said many young yeah, people Yeah, many, many, many kids, so many young generation of youth, they don't have anybody to direct them. And even regarding to Zairean and this other one, mixed with Burundian and Rwandians. Mm -hmm. yeah. So those all, they need somebody to direct them, how to welcome them, what the state of Maine can do for them and what they can do. Right, because yeah. there are so many opportunities out there and we're not always aware of all the opportunities that are there. That's correct, it's, you need uh, formation, you need another issue, I think, I can be honest, uh, is the level of the bearing of the language sometimes. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You know, if you don't have really good English, how are you going to ask to get where you want to get? Exactly. Mm -hmm. And that's one of your goals yeah. to, to help. Now, with this new group, they're primarily French speaking. That's correct. It's, um, it's and that. so you were saying you might need some people. Yeah, I might need some people to help to speak French. Right. I mean, I was a couple of years ago in Gabon, but that was not enough for me right. to be fluent in right. French. But yeah, some French speakers who could help with help some of the... to direct these young kids when I speak to them, yeah. our explanation, or maybe it can be a workshop, mm -hmm. another way, mm -hmm. or any gardening. Like the one we just did it Saturday, it was a good meeting about to accept who they are and welcome them, right. and they fill the form yeah. with the information. That's yeah. what give me a chance if I need them to meet them, I'll call them, I'll email them. Yeah, mm -hmm. and just so they know there is somebody they can reach out That's to correct. who will help them find answers that That's they correct. Yeah. to the questions they have. Um, the other thing that we were talking about that this sort of transitions into is the idea that people are told you've got to go to college, you've got to go to college, but we're a state that is very short on people in the trades right now. Yeah, uh, uh, I believe in the trade is better and college is almost there, you're not going to go nowhere. But I'm just look at it, the system of the high school, they just get them quick to get to college. But they have to have a second chance for something else. Mm -hmm. if, if they accept the trade, they will get a better job. And then later on, they still have a chance to go to college. I'm not saying right. they not go to college. Right. I just look at it, when you see your mom, she have a low job, just say maybe she's working uh, be, uh, uh, housekeeping. Now she have a hope, if I have a daughter or a son, when he done the school, he will, he will gonna help me. So what do you think if he done the high school, get to college, even if he doesn't continue, he created a problem for himself, for the family, and then even to the American system, that's why we have a lot of debt in the system. Right, because a people, lot of debt. Yeah, yeah, they get the money yeah. and, and they don't pay back. Right. So what is gonna happen? It's affecting the new migrant and affecting the old right. migrant who are already here in the United States. Right. So we need to have balance. Yeah, and I think, you know, the idea that there are so many jobs Job right trade, now. Job trade, like plumber, mechanic. Those the culinary, jobs, culinary arts. arts. Yeah, there yeah. is so many. And I think that's a, a wonderful um, 
service that you can give is to That's explain correct. what some of the alternatives to college are at this point without deterring them from going. That's yeah. right. And, and even I had something very important in this meeting this Saturday, let's talk about Agana Rich. There was two, okay. who are one of the uh, business woman, her name is Lucy. She just have a grocery store mm -hmm. in Cumberland. She was in the meeting. So I tried to induce all these youth to know them and then they can help them. If somebody in the store need help to come to clean right. it up, right. how to move the boxes. Right. We need to engage them to know life is taking give and take. Right. It have to be both sides. Right. And also the, to let people know that what is available. I That's mean, correct. you can't do anything if you don't know there's something to something do. Something available. Yeah. yeah so. Now, what got you really motivated to work with youth, um, Bazia? Uh, right now, I have more kids, I believe, from Zaire. Mm -hmm. Some of them from uh, uh, Somalia, some of them from Burundi and Rwanda. Yeah. Because all these, especially some uh, Burundi, Rwanda, and Zaire, they're mm -hmm. very close border between yeah. those three countries. And then even uh, Kenya, and then uh, Sopia, yeah. and then Somalia. And you're coming from South Sudan. Uh, yeah, I'm have from an South understanding, understanding of what is happening, what they're going through. Going through, because uh, if you look at back in the day, Africa divided to two sides: East Africa and West mm -hmm. Africa. And uh, East Africa controlled by British, and mm -hmm. then West Africa controlled by French. Right. That's why there's a division of how they operate. Yeah. Sometimes the people from West Africa, because they're connected to more French, that different of people from mm -hmm. East Africa is English. Well, and they have better chance to be different a little bit because yeah. the, the, the British, when they used to be colonized by British, they almost had to teach them yeah. more than to just be there for them. Right. There are di different ways of dealing with it. Well, one thing that you're going to do to bring all of the people here together, not just the people from the countries in Africa, but people here together, yeah. will be to celebrate the independence of, of South, South Sudan, Sudan yeah. Republic of South Sudan, Sudan. Um, which is usually celebrated on July 9th. Nine, but because people, they will have a job, because July 9 is Tuesday, but we decide to do it on next Saturday, it's gonna be 30, yeah. and it's gonna be in Kennedy Park from three to seven. And it's gonna be a soccer, soccer game. Soccer game, and welcome or football, football, football game. game. <laughs> and uh, it's gonna be welcome all Africa in the state, and even the American who here, yeah. to come and watch it. And, and the other thing very important I wanna add for this South Sudan, the music of South Sudan is a square of Texas. Uh -huh. That's telling That's me there's it. a lot of things connected. Yeah. And then when you see July 4 is a depend of United States mm -hmm. and then South Sudan depend on July 9. <laughs> so I think there's something going on here. I think there is too. It sounds great. And these are there's, there are two soccer teams Team. made up of people from South Sudan. Yeah, and one from New Hampshire, one from Poland. That's and gonna be a really, really amazing. Do you right? know what time it will be? Uh, we really we received them at three, but the game is going to start at five uh -huh. to seven. But three people come, bring right. a picnic. Yeah, they'll be around and yeah. a small thing to go on and maybe some shaking hand. And they can get in touch with you for right. more information. Yeah, more information. You can call me on my phone number. is 207-615-2429. That's perfect. You well, can be able to call and anybody would yeah, love to be part yeah. of it, let us know. And what, you know, it's soccer is kind of the universal language. Language, in other way, because yeah. uh, game almost give you more attracted, yeah. you know. I know we've been three years or four years, we don't celebrate in different reasons, but a, a game is different of just have yeah. a place or yeah. eat or not. But this is going to give you more more. And it doesn't matter where you're from, you that's understand right. what they're doing. Doing, that's correct. <laughs> well, thank you, Bazia. Um, it's always joyful to have you on the show thank you and uh, look forward to the next time no problem i'll be ready for the next one thank, thank you, you.